Thank you. Uh, if I'm shaking, it's not because I'm nervous, it's because I'm Irish and uh, right now I'm sober. <laughs> Thanks, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Thanks, I do this every week. I was raised Irish Catholic and uh, I'm not practicing Irish anymore. And uh, as a kid, whenever we used to leave unfinished drinks lying around the house, our father would say, come on kids, drink up. There are sober children in Africa. <laughs> I was a victim of uh, racial profiling not too long ago. I walked into a bar and uh, just because I'm Irish, the bartender's like, hey buddy, can I get you something to drink? I was like, yeah, how about a glass with a little less racism in it, you know? And some bourbon. I'm not an alcoholic, but I do drink socially. And uh, I've been social now for about the last 14 years, three months and two days. So uh, just taking that one day at a time, guys. Just taking that one day at a time. I don't know if you've ever been to an Irish restaurant, but uh, they don't give you a menu. They just ask you how you want your potato. We uh, like potatoes so much that in the 1800s when we ran out, people died. You know, never mind that we were on an island and that seafood was always an option. <laughs> now we're sticking with the potatoes. Uh, I grew up here in Southern California and uh, growing up I always wanted to learn Spanish. Now I'd be happy just recognizing Spanish, you know, with all the nationalities and ethnicities we have. Uh, I've probably said buenos dias to every Armenian living in LA. <laughs> I was in a grocery store and I saw a bag that said, uh, tortilla chips, Mexican style. I was like, thank God, you know, because uh, if there's one thing I don't stand for, it's Canadian style tortilla chips. <laughs> don't like them. Never lie about your age at a high school reunion. <laughs> I played high school football here in the United States of America and uh, Although you're not necessarily treated like a god, you definitely see yourself as one. And uh, in our locker room, we had banners and signs and slogans everywhere. And one of them, a commonly known one, read, pain is temporary, pride is forever. And now looking back, I can't help but think, yeah, what a good point, you know? Pain is temporary. Uh, unless, of course, it comes in the form of an anterior cruciate ligament tear, you know, that you suffer in your left knee after going over the middle on third and long, catching a pass, helping seal the playoff victory for your team and send them into the semifinals for the California State Championship, a game you yourself wouldn't be able to play in or play in any other football game ever again for the rest of your life. Pain isn't so temporary when that happens, tends to stick around a little while. Nobody's kneeling before you when you're wrapped in a leg brace with a bloody staple infested bandage around your knee that requires you to cut off a pant leg of your overpriced rented tuxedo so that you're Parental arranged prom date has pictures to show her new boyfriend next year at UCLA. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're attending the local junior college, throbbing in pain every time the temperature drops below 59 degrees. That's the kind of pride we're talking about, thanks, but I'll pass. I'll be down the hall in drama where the only pain will be watching all those wannabe actors battle it out over the role of Rum Tum Tugger in the school's misadaptation of the hit Broadway musical Cats. So, uh, pain sticks around a little while, you guys. Sticks around a little while. Uh, I don't know if anybody drinks Red Bull Vodka around here, but uh, if you hold a Red Bull Vodka up to your ear, you can hear yourself apologizing the next day. <laughs> That's how strong of a drink Red Bull Vodka is. I was dating a girl and things were going pretty good and she said, hey, you know, I want us to be as close as you are with your guy friends. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. Uh, and I, so I went out of town and uh, I slept with this total stranger and I wanted to call my new buddy back home that's a girl and tell her about it. And she totally freaks out, you guys. So uh, mixed signals, huh, girls, sometimes? Before the uh, relationship even started, she was over at the house and, uh, you know, we hadn't consummated her or nothing like that. And then she slept over and uh, we were cuddling and she said, I feel really safe in your arms. And then we consummated. And I thought, wow, this safety thing is a great angle, you know? So uh, I will go, go over to her house the next night with a uh, shotgun and a hunting knife. And uh, she wouldn't let me in, you guys. So mixed signals. She, uh, 
she went to Italy not too long after that, and I was like, can I come? And she's like, silly rabbit, there's uh, good looking guys in Italy. You know? <laughs> Taking you to Italy would be like taking a bologna sandwich to a buffet. And I don't know about you guys, but I love bologna. So, uh, girls, you say the sweetest things sometimes. It's so great. My compliments to those of you with the free Tibet bumper stickers. Uh, I really think they're making a difference, you guys. Keep that up. Chinese diplomats here in the States calling Beijing on a daily basis, just going, look boss, these commuters on the 405 and the 101, they don't like our foreign policy. And it looks like they mean business. I mean, it's a teal Honda Civic in front of me. So if we could just, uh, you know, pull out of Tibet, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. You know, maybe clear up some bumper space for a legalize the weed sticker or a uh, Jesus fish, or if it's a black Toyota Tacoma, a nice Raider Nation logo. <laughs> Whenever we uh, see someone that's scary, we always say, boy, you wouldn't want to meet that guy in a dark alley. But uh, really, who would you want to meet in a dark alley, you know? Even if it's a little kid, you're like, man, what's that kid doing back there in that dark alley? It's creeping me out, man. It's creeping me out. I, uh, I bought some... Uh, Bought some new shoes. Uh, not wearing them tonight, but uh, they're at home if anybody wants to uh, come over later. And check them out. It'd be good. Uh, I went to the Museum of Tolerance today. Uh, can't stand that place, you guys. Uh, Frosted Flakes are good, you guys. They're not great. Thank you, that concludes my uh, breakfast, breakfast material. Thank you very much. I live here in Los Angeles. Half a million actresses in this town. I can't get one to act like she likes me. <laughs> Nobody will commit to that role. And uh, we've auditioned thousands of girls. Must be the writing. Uh, would it kill the people of uh, Los Angeles to smile once in a while? The answer to that is yes, it would. Just this morning, I was opening a door for a young woman. I smiled at her. She attempted to smile back at me. She dropped dead right there, you guys. <laughs> dropped dead right there. In LA, do we really need a weather person and a traffic reporter? You know, can't we combine the two jobs into one? It's nice out, the freeways are crowded. Back to you, Hal, with celebrity gossip. <laughs> I went to my first uh, drug deal not too long ago, and... Um, <laughs> I tried to pay with a gift certificate. <laughs> and uh, they don't take them, you guys. Just I, uh, I got my headshots back this week, and uh, looks like I'm gonna be a writer. 